Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the most important Viva questions of compiler design. As we know in compiler design, we have theory paper as well as practical paper. In practical paper, we will have to give the Viva exam. So in this video, we are going to discuss the frequently asked Viva questions in college university practical exam. So let's start today's videos. Before starting the videos, if you are new to our channel, then kindly subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of the video we are uploading on this channel. So let's start today's video. This is the first questions. What are the different phases in compiler? So in compiler, we have lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer, semantic analyzer, intermediate code generator, code optimizer, target code generation. Apart from this, we have symbol table and error handling. Moving to the next questions. What is lexical analysis? This is the important questions. You should know all the things about lexical analysis. It is the first phase of compiler which will divide the program into meaningful words which are known as tokens. It simply divides the program and uh, the meaningful words that is divided is known as tokens. Lexical analyzer also eliminates the comments line and white space from the source program. If we write the program and there is comment line, then lexical analysis removed that comment line. It also helps giving the error message by providing the line number and column number. While compiling the program, we get error message by compiler. Then that is given by the lexical analysis. And in many time, interviewer ask that count the number of tokens present in this statement. Suppose this is the statement and interviewer ask count the number of tokens. Then in this statement, the number of tokens is 10. You pause the video and try to count the number of tokens in this video. So, uh, the next question is what is top down and bottom of parser? Hey, this is the classification of parser that is top down parser and the bottom of parser. The bottom of uh, parser and top down parser. In top down parser, the parser will start from the root and proceed to the children's. It uses the LMD. While talking about bottom of parser, parsing will start from children's and proceed to root and it uses the reverse of RMD that is right most derivations. Moving to the next questions, what is MB gives us grammar? Suppose we have a grammar and a, through that grammar we can draw more than one parse tree then that's, that grammar is known as ambiguous grammar and if we are able to draw one and only parse tree then that grammar is known as the unambiguous grammar. And the next question is uh, what is left factoring? Suppose we are, uh, we are given a grammar that is capital A goes to capital A small a slash small a. So, by looking this grammar, first we will have to see the LHS of grammar. Here in LHS we have capital A and after that we will have to see the production of the RHS. In RHS we see here on the production of RHS the left symbol that is capital A. It means this capital A is present in LHS that is leftmost symbol of the production and also the RHS of the grammar. Then this grammar is known as the left recursion. It means the grammar contain the left recursions. And uh, we will have to remove this left recursion from the given grammar. These are the steps to remove the left recursions, eliminate the left recursions. Then this is the grammar A goes to capital A small a slash small a. Then the step to remove eliminate this is capital A goes to small a capital A dash and A dash goes to small a A dash slash a. Moving to the next question that is left factoring. In this also we are given a grammar and a the interviewer asked to check whether the grammar contain left factoring or not. Now, so how we can check? Let's see here. Here the uh, grammar is capital A goes to small a b1 slash small a c2. Here you can see in the both production that is a b1 slash a c2. We both have the symbol a on LHS. We both have the symbol a on LHS. So we can take common here a. It means that the grammar contain left factoring. So how we can remove the left factoring from the given grammar? So these are the step here. Capital A goes to a small a a dash and a dash goes to b1 slash c2. And if we will combine these two production that is two, then we will give, uh, then we will get the above grammar. So by uh, doing this step, we remove the left factoring from the given grammar. And here the classification of parser are as follow. As we had already seen top down and bottom of parser, and in the top down parsers, we have two parser that is recursive and non-recursive. 
and in recursive we have to study recursive descent parser and on non recursive we will have to study the ll1 parser one thing you should remember that in top down parser if the grammar is free from left factoring and left recursion then we will then the given grammar can be ll1 or recursive descent if a grammar contain left recursion or left factoring then it cannot be ll1 or recursive descent so it should be remembered that for top down the grammar should be free from left recursions and the left factoring and now moving to the bottom of parser and in bottom of parser we have lr parser and operator precedence parser in lr parser we have four parser that is lr0 slr1 clr1 and lalr1 and in operator precedence parsers we have only to study the operator precedence parser and the criteria for this parser are as follow for lr parser the grammar should be unambiguous grammar and for the operator precedence parser the grammar may be ambiguous or unambiguous it doesn't matter only the thing is that grammar should be operator precedence grammar what is operator precedence grammar we will see in the next video uh, next slide so the next question is what is first and follow first is a set of terminal symbol which occur at the first symbol in the string derived from a and the follow is a set of terminal which occur immediately after the non terminal a in the string derived from the string symbol the definition of first and follow should be remembered as we know uh, that uh, we know how to find the first and follow but uh, the interviewer ask what is first and what is follow then at that time we will have to give the definition so pause the video and remember the definitions of first and follow and the next is what is inadequate state as we know while uh, constructing the table we get many times that a single cell contains the s or r symbol it means shift or reduce then if a cell contain either one s or one r it means s or r combination of s or r or the combination of r it means 2 r 3 r then that is known as the inadequate state while constructing the dfa that state is known as the uh, inadequate state and there are two type of conflict possible that is shift reduce conflict that is sr conflict and reduce reduce conflict that is rr conflict now moving to the next questions what is operator precedence grammar this is important questions you should know about the operator precedence grammar which grammar is operator precedence and which grammar is not operator precedence so a grammar g is called operator precedence grammar if it does not contain the following see these things it does not contain it means if a grammar contain null production or two variables on rhs of the production side by side then that grammar is called operator precedence grammar if a grammar contain these two things either any one of these two things that is either null production or either two variable on rhs side by side then that grammar is not called the operator precedence grammar see here in example here capital s goes to capital a capital b so here you can see that here the two variables that is capital a and capital b are the two variables and present side by side it means adjacent then this grammar is not operator precedence grammar and if i put here that is a terminal a small e then this grammar becomes the operator precedence grammar so i hope you know the concept of operator precedence grammar how we can check the operator precedence grammar so and moving to the next question this is a, one of the most important questions the interviewer asked what are the different types of code optimization technique so there are mainly two type of code optimization technique that is machine independent and machine dependent in our syllabus there is only machine independent we don't have to study about the machine dependent code optimization technique so what are the different type of machine independent code optimization technique that is loop optimization and in loop optimization we have to study three techniques that is loop invariant loop unrolling and loop jamming other techniques are dead code eliminations strength reduction constant folding copy propagations redundancy eliminations algebraic simplification so these are the seven techniques that used while we will have to code we will have to optimize the code in general interviewer ask what are the different code optimization technique then you will have to remember the at least five uh, optimization technique and a five optimization technique is enough you will sometimes the interviewer also ask uh, what is loop invariant loop unrolling and loop jamming so you can tell these things otherwise if you tell the five techniques that is uh, more than enough so these are the most important uh, 
uh, questions that is asked in the compiler design and if you have any doubt in this video or if you have any problem then kindly put your problem or doubt in the comment box i will try to reply your uh, comment so see you in the next video till then bye bye